Filling in for an ailing John Hudson, we have researcher extraordinaire, author, <laughs> Nicole Sackage with the Unbiased UFO Report tonight. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I'm so sorry, Mr. Hudson sick, but I'll fill in anytime. I think you know I know. I think you're going to be fantastic. I, I really do. We got some weird stories that have really come out. Now, earlier today, it was announced by Dr. Stephen Greer that, oh. yeah, I know. I know that he wants to make sure that anything that Senator Gillibrand comes out of with her new proposal of unexplained sightings, more commonly known as UFOs or UAP, that he's part of the process and that he could be one of the professional experts that she can rely upon. What do you think about that? Hmm. This is the first I'm hearing of this, actually. <clears throat> so... I'm not going to make any snap wild, like, oh, Greer, bleh. I'm going to fall back on the Wilson document, Greer. Like, you know, the, there was truth in that. He was talking about these things a decade, two decades before we were. He has sources. He does kind of know how to play this ego game with these political government egos. So I say, go for it. Send in Greer, but he can't be the only one. Sorry. He can't be the only one. If we're sending in representatives, sure Greer, but uh, you know, I nominate Grant, even though he's Canadian, like I nominate Grant to go into and Linda throw in Linda. All right. Well, this is what, this is what this is what's said here. Senator Gillibrand and this committee need the authoritative and truthful information they will get from Dr. Greer. Please tell Senator Gillibrand that Dr. Greer is the world's expert on UFOs and extraterrestrial intelligence. Let her know that he has been briefed or that he has briefed world leaders, a sitting CIA director, head of intelligence to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and other notables. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Like, I mean, everybody throws around, oh, Greer has this giant ego. And, you know, I I think a giant ego is needed to build what he's built and to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people like he has gone. You know, I mean, these government people have giant egos too, especially when you're talking about, you know, military people. So you can't have like a Minnie Mouse type person go up against these people. You need a big ego to go back. So very true. Very yeah. true. Okay, let's let's move on to topics here. Because yeah. recently, Lou Elizondo, who's been ominously silent recently, posted a photograph on his Twitter account posing with Chris Mellon in front of the congressional buildings in Washington, D.C. And basically, you know, being all secluded, basically, what are we doing here? Who knows what we're doing here? Why would we be here? What's our purpose of being here? Who so, like, it, it was a now selfie. It wasn't, like, from yeah. a few years ago. No, it was a, it was a brand-new selfie <laughs> where apparently they have been meeting with people regarding this topic. You know... A lot, Lou Elizondo gets a lot of grief because he says a lot without saying a lot. And when he tries to say something, he hides behind his, his NDAs, his non-disclosure agreements that he has. Do you think that he, he is right in the middle of all of these talks as the leading expert regarding the UAP phenomena? Or do you think he's just sitting in to these talks to listen to what's going on because he has the pull and the ability to do so. I hope it's a little bit of both, you know, I mean, he's obviously 
a champion in our community right now, whether you agree with everything that's going on with him or his background or whatever. But I think the more faces we can put to this, the better. And if he's going to be in there and kind of like steer it in our direction or be a part of it, then I think, you know, it's all hands on deck. I'm I'm kind of excited because I've been calling this, you know, his third gear, like what's going on? And they're saying it's all behind the scenes. So it's behind our scenes, but it's, you know, he's doing what he does. That's what he's here for. Let him do it. Do you believe, though, that he really does have ufology's best interest at heart? Here, this is what they always say about experiencers, right? I believe he believes he has ufology's best interest at heart. So, there. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. They fell off. <laughs> okay. On, on the flip side of this, on the flip side of this, there's a lot of people who believe he has an agenda because he does have his book coming out where apparently it's going to be a lot of information that he hasn't shared recently. Everybody is quickly anticipating what is going to be happening there regarding the information. You know, do you think though that we are, we are looking at the precipice of something big coming out with a major announcement soon, whether it's yeah. from you or whether it's from government officials. I think, I think for the last two years or the last year, especially we've been in this ebb and tide of information. And I think, you know, now that we're in this third or fourth cycle of it, shame on you. If you don't really believe that buzz that something's coming because it has, and it's going to continue. So, I mean, some people can say that they want what they want. And I've never spoken with, I, I even don't, I call him Lou all the time. And that feels so disrespectful because I've never met him, but he's doing his job. We need to stand behind him. I know people think that he's a liar or he's a spin, spin artist or something, but you know, I've been called that in the last week myself. So I think it's a pitfall we all face. And Lou will get there. I think we can, I haven't caught him in a lie yet. Let's put it that way. You know, if he says something's coming, you know, something's coming. And I'm excited for that. And a selfie with him and Melon, well, you know, when the two of them buddy up, uh, stuff comes out, discs appear, <laughs> things get exchanged. So, I mean, I'd be excited to figure out anything that they're doing together. So I want well, more than a selfie and a tweet though. Like, <laughs> and if I have to wait for a book, that's fine. Of course I'll buy it. So we all have our agendas, I guess, is one way of, of putting it. Whether they're big or small, there you go. It, it is very interesting, to say the least. Down in Australia, journalist Ross Coltart announced a, a, a story about Australian UFOs and some of the sightings that they have had down in Australia regarding this phenomena. Of course, we're all familiar if you're into this subject with the secret military base there called Pine Gap, where there's not a lot of information about what's going on. But one of the things and one of the stories he shared was about a, a crucial witness named Tanya who went to West Hall High School in 1966, where there was a UFO tic-tac style seen hovering near the school. She, was, she then described in her story about how she was approached as a child by American officials, almost like men in black, telling her to be quiet about what she saw in the interest of national security. Men in black. Now, granted, we don't hear a lot of men in black stories about what about today, but back then they were seemed to be quite fervent around popular sightings around here. Do you think the men in black were or had the ability to be American 
down there, you know, worried about Australian sightings of a child? You know, when I first heard this and I meant to do some digging on it, um, you know, to me, this snidbit of narrative kind of harkens back all the way to um, Donald Kehoe doing his tours. And, you know, when he went to Australia and was trying to like sound the alarm that there was this, you know, UFO cover up happening, that there was something in our skies. You know, I believe he had gathered reports of maybe not necessarily men in black, but government or U.S. government officials interviewing witnesses there. So, I mean, whether it's men in black or the U.S. government, you know, coming into cases in other countries, I think, yes, that happens. I think it's been happening throughout the modern history of ufology. So they are an allied nation. It kind of makes sense in some realm of thinking, but I think it's interesting. And if Ross Coulter is blowing the whistle on something, I think, you know, that makes everybody's ears perk up. Like, hmm? Huh? <laughs> yes. So. All right. I want to get your opinion on Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, along with Ooh. Bill Nelson from NASA, recently starting to use the word extraterrestrial in their conversations no longer are we hearing russia no longer are we hearing china no longer are we hearing the words foreign adversary but this is the first time we're hearing some very important people regarding this subject use the word extraterrestrial when talking about the adventures of these tic tacs that have been formed this is a big step Okay, we have heard about these phases, Nicole. Phase one was introducing the mainstream to the public. Phase two was the start of confirmation that this isn't anything of, of human nature and, and made by humans. We need, we need government to start talking about this. Have we officially or unofficially started phase three from what I'm hearing, which is the extraterrestrial phenomena? I, I think it might be the rumblings of it, you know, um, when we talk about these phases, <laughs> Steve Bassett's truth embargo always pops up into my head, you know, and that's one thing he's been saying is, you know, that extraterrestrials, that word, or, you know, it's going to enter the conversation. And I don't know his timeline on things. I know he might throw one out, but you know, I, I might chalk this one over to Mr. Bassett there for saying it's going to happen and here we're seeing it in fruition. And I think there's a lot of us in the community that are maybe going, woohoo, you know, she said it, it's about time, you know, and there's others that are going, it's still not enough or others going, well, she should have said ultra terrestrials. And some going, at least she didn't call them aliens. So it's hard to tell right now. <laughs> so, and, and I get you, but are, is the mainstream media, in your opinion, missing the entire point of the words extraterrestrial now being used in the symbolism of these craft? Um, don't they miss a lot these days? I mean... <laughs> We could harp for another 20 minutes on journalism ignoring this or not paying attention enough. I mean, what disaster do we really want to blame it on this week? We've heard all through the last year that it's like, oh, COVID, the headline, COVID, COVID, Trump, Trump. We're not hearing about disclosure because of this. So, I mean, I don't know. It goes hand in hand. We'll just have to take it for what it is and keep going. It's a good thing. All Extra right. Terrestrials. Like we'll get there. We'll get to ultra terrestrials in another 60 years. It's all right. <laughs> Nicole Sack, it's filling in for John Hudson, who is ailing, who is normally here for the unbiased UFO report.